what started as a peaceful student protest against job quotas turned into a deadly uprising in Bangladesh. Look, uh, nobody is uh, uh, saying that uh, just remove the whole quota system or nobody is asking for that. Not even the, the student protester, those who are involved with this protest. Uh, they want reform of, uh, of this uh, quota system. You know, the Bangladesh has, uh, you know, kind of frustration nowadays because of the uh, democratic backsliding, of course, uh, um, the shrinking from our expression and so many things. Uh, protesters were very much, very much uh, um, angry with the journalists because uh, many television journal uh, television were not reporting uh, the facts. Uh, we saw that the most of the uh, ruling party businessmen or people connected with the ruling party they are the founder of most of the television channels. Alarming photo on Twitter which showed uh, bloodstains on your ID card. Many journalists were uh, shot at and uh, at least two journalists were killed during this time. Um, I'm, I'm lucky, I'm so lucky that uh, uh, I, I got the, so many of the bar shots and the, the rubber bullets. Uh, both of my hands uh, but because I was wearing bulletproof vest and I was wearing a helmet so I was a bit prepared and that's why I could save my uh, life. Most of the hospital were occupied by the injured protesters uh, either they are injured by the gunshots or they are attacked by the stones. It was uh, terrible then so it, it was like a warlike situation at that day. We saw literally the students, especially the female students, were badly written, you know. I was told by one of the police officers, he said, look, I couldn't, uh, uh, I could fail to uh, protect my son. Uh, I, I, he was desperate to go uh, and to join uh, the protest and I had to lock my son uh, at, at, at home before the uh, 2018 election, they agreed and they said, okay, um, we, we have to you know, stop this quota system. All of a sudden, there was a commotion when these uh, students protester was framed as a Rajakars. You know, Rajakars is a very sensitive word for Bangladesh youths. They don't want to be Rajakars. You know, the Rajakar means is, uh, you know, uh, AIDS uh, or, I mean, the helper but uh, in here the Bangladeshi youth believe the word is traitor and uh, who is saying that that is the uh, a dictator is saying uh, the traitor uh, government is yet to finalize the proper list of freedom fighters that's oh. the basic thing okay. so there are allegations in many cases the fake freedom fighters or fake freedom fighter certificate are used to recruit some pro-government people. So that's a big issue. Hello and welcome to NL Interviews. What started as a peaceful student protest against job quotas turned into a deadly uprising in Bangladesh. We're recording this on 25th July and as of now, the death toll has reached 150. On July 1st, Students had started a peaceful protest against the Bangladesh High Court's decision to reinstate a quota that reserved around 30% government jobs for children of freedom fighters of the 1971 Liberation War of Independence from Pakistan. The protest took a violent turn 10 days ago, with thousands arrested, hundreds killed, a nationwide curfew imposed, internet shutdown and alleged shoot-on-sight orders. This has been called the biggest challenge to Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina, who has spent 15 years in office and started her fourth term in January. We're joined by Muktadir Rashid, a journalist who has been reporting on ground in Bangladesh. He was also shot at while he was reporting. Hi Muktadir, thank you so much for joining us. You're welcome. I want to start by asking you what the current situation is like on ground. Um, it's a, a, if you talk about just today, we started, it's far better than uh, it was uh, last week um, or last few days. Um, it's far better, far better in a sense of uh, um, people are moving and uh, when the curfew lags. And um, uh, we see the 
police patrolling different places and of course the army um, are uh, also patrolling with their convoy and 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 their with the heavy um guns so and you will see in every hour you will find that the helicopter is hovering over the a sky and yeah this is the situation right now i would not say it's a warlike situation but it's a more or less situation it's very tense and uh, um people are mostly talking about uh, the what happened last few days because it was internet blockage and we are uh, absolutely cut off uh, from the rest of the world so um i really don't know what happened last uh, few days uh, um we got some partial um news because we cannot go everywhere um as you know that was extremely difficult for the journalists even on the ground because many journalists were uh, shot at and uh, at least two journalists were killed during this time so um one of the journalists who were, who was killed in dhaka uh, he was uh, no he was wounded by the gun shots and um i'm i'm lucky i'm so lucky that uh, uh, i i got so many of the bar shots and the, the rubber bullets uh, both of my hands uh, but because i was wearing uh, uh the bulletproof vest and i was wearing a helmet because uh, i was uh, sensing it was very tense and the police was so rough and they were deploying because i have been following for um, this um, in a police action for a few days so i was a bit prepared and that's why i could save my uh, life uh, but if i'm not sure that uh, many uh, many were very very difficult situation especially the journalists who were in the street on the other hand those who were you know uh, protester uh, protester were very much very much uh, um angry with the journalists because uh, many television journal uh, television were not reporting uh, the facts uh, due to their own barriers and um, and and, and uh, you know you know the situation uh, media uh, bit uh, you know they don't want to share all the deta- uh, all the information what they saw in the ground so when they see something uh, the protester were saying hey you are the teacher say you are not uh, giving the whole truth or uh, to the audience uh, so that was very very difficult situation for the journalist on the ground on the other hand the journalist who were um covering um they had to be very cautious um uh, uh, i usually i can um i i i, I try to write and describe something the press like that. so one of our journalists who was uh, was me uh, was with me and the, the protester saw only the p and they thought it's police and he also been attacked so what i started doing that we just write in bangla the journalist not journalist in english in in uh, bangla shangbadi uh, so we had to do like that in in to do just to avoid the situation can you tell us uh, the what were the major challenges uh, while reporting on this conflict oh the major challenges of the conflict because when i was covering when i uh, i saw uh, i witnessed the uh, the ruling party uh, leaders uh, or their people are using firearms alongside the police so it was very difficult for me to you know um for that because um for the journalist uh, i would say that uh, I, i was not writing everything on you know, like press vest uh, uh, or like the helmet or the shangbadik like this I, i didn't do that beforehand because uh, the ruling party men also uh were uh, very much uh, uh, anti journalist at the time um many of them are asking me not to film anything not to take any picture because you know when um uh, i had to write just now i finished writing one of the articles so uh, as soon as i write something so i must have some photo or video just to you know corroborate all the evidence so it was very difficult for us to get all the pictures uh because they are asking me not to take picture uh, and i have the photo that uh, someone asking me hey don't take any picture hey journalists what are you doing so that's a very complicated situation for me and because police are not here to help you you know 
the police are uh, doing their own business. They are trying to suppress the protest and they are shooting the uh, uh, student protesters. And so the and the ruling party men are using their guns uh, alongside the, and they're using and as much po- possible that power. If I do anything wrong there, like uh, if they understand that I'm a journalist around. So what I did, I took in a kind of uh, undercover, like I took my medical paper with me just to show that I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to uh you know, right. hospital to uh, recover or the you know dressing or something and then I try to take as much as uh, I can because that day uh, when I was covering the Friday that was one of the milestone for uh, uh, I'll say uh, for this event. And you had posted, um, you mentioned that you were also shot at and you'd also put a very um, alarming photo on Twitter which showed uh, bloodstains on your ID card. Can you uh, tell us a little more about what happened that day? Oh, yeah, sure. Um, I was uh, uh, I was looking for a neutral place for uh, you know taking pictures and uh, and the views as much I can do for my uh, news portal. So uh, I, I, I took uh, I st- uh, stood uh, uh, on the on the uh, on a put over base and uh, near the police station. I saw lots of police uh, were uh, you know uh, nearby, and I was bit I was cautious so that uh, no uh, and they were. Uh, uh, far uh, from uh, uh, a bit far from me, and I thought uh, they will they will not fire. Uh, they're behind. I, I, actually, I was in, the, in their position. So um, when the student protesters and the protester, I would say, uh, when they were chasing the police, the police uh, uh, you know, fled along with the ruling party uh, people. So uh, after. Uh, just after two or three minutes, uh, they started uh, shooting, uh, targeting the students, uh, and um, uh, students were pelting stones uh, against the police. Uh, so uh, I caught in the middle. So I lay down on the uh, uh, on the on the roof. Uh, I'm sorry, on the foot of a breeze. The moment I was, uh, you know, uh, laying down on the uh, foot of a breeze, um, but uh, you know the bad shots. Uh, hit my hands both of the hands so i was uh very much worried because uh i was wearing the life vest and the helmets so that looks like a policeman a uh, plain cloth policeman so the the protester thought that i am a policeman a plain cloth policeman so they came with uh, you know stones and brick chips and they tried to attack me so i was uh, i tried to say uh, just get out the press ID from my uh, West, and I, I showed them, look, I'm a journalist. Uh, I'm covering the event. So a uh, few of them, that they checked my ID card, and because it is all uh, already been, you uh, know, blood stain, and uh, they you can see uh, the blood here. So when I touched it, so uh, here, here I, I got injured here. So when I hold it, so the blood already uh, stained all the uh, no. Uh, ID card. So, you know, what exactly happened? Uh, I, I, I said, please help me to get uh, get out of this place uh, because I was not, I couldn't move at the time. So uh, they helped me a bit. Uh, just show me the road, the way I can uh, get out of that place. Uh, then I, uh, fortunately, and that time there was um, tremendous you know, fire and. Um, indiscriminate fire, I would say, that the indiscriminate fire from the police side and that the ruling party talks all together, they were firing against the students, the students are putting stones. So I just scrolled down and then I got the staircase and then I okay. I could like, uh, I was just remembering Maria Colvin that uh, what she had, uh, how she was shot in uh, Sri Lanka. I just remembering that moment, and then I just uh, lay down on the uh, floor uh, of the uh, foot over breeze, and yeah, and then I get a, a rickshaw after walking five minutes uh, from that uh, you know tense situation, uh, tense location, 
and the rickshaw puller took me to the hospitals and the hospital gave me uh, as better treatment they have at the time okay. so most of the hospital were occupied by the injured protesters um, either they are injured by the gunshots or they are attacked by the stones um it was uh, terrible then so it, it was like a warlike situation at yes. that day. and uh, i mean incredibly difficult circumstances uh, for reporting yeah, how did you uh, did you manage to get up the next day and again go to the field to uh, do your job as a reporter or it did it take some days to be able to do that again because this this is life and death literally oh well um when i was uh, i was uh, injured and i was taking rest uh, uh, following the day uh, it was very difficult for me to stay uh, at uh, home because uh, um, I, i always cover from the field and um, it's really difficult for me to be a stay, uh, to be at home and um, something is happening nearby so uh, i was trying to you know i i, I tried to call every contact i have around uh, you know those who were in the uh those those who were on the field on that day they were saying look uh, the ruling party people uh came with the uh, you know rifle uh, on the, with the with the firearms and they were shooting at the people and the police were you know um uh, talking at the same time uh, people were you know, it uh, that was an un- unbelievable situation so um i my wife uh, uh she uh i i was uh, about to about to leave the my home and said look i, I have to see what is going on the field so uh, she was with me uh, and uh, she escorted me in fact to a uh, hospital so that we can say yes we are going to hospital right. to take medicine or wow. dressing so basically i went there to ask the how many patient uh, were oh. admitted on the day and uh, how many of them had you know kind of because right. i was hearing that at least two uh, people were killed and at, at that location and they were taken to that hospital that is al hilal hospital right. so i went that hospital just to verify the information and i found nobody is there and then i asked uh, so how many then then they found that i am also uh, somewhat injured so they give me a free dressing and say look don't worry you will get a free medicine medication here um, many of them they say they treated more than 70 uh, bullet injured uh, you know a patient uh, at that day uh, and, and uh, in a span of 3 or 4 uh, hours uh mukader i just want to get to the root of the clashes that took place which uh, was the reinstation of the quota for um children of freedom fighters of the 1971 war so the protest started on july 1st but they took a violent turn i believe around uh, 8 to 10 days ago what caused this escalation can you take us through that of course um look uh, nobody is uh, uh, saying that uh, just remove the whole uh, quota system or nobody is asking for that not even the the student protester those who were involved with this protest they are only saying that it uh, because of the time uh, after 50 years of the uh, 54 years of the liberation war that should be reformed uh, they want reform of uh, of this uh, quota system and the government in, before the uh, 2018 election they agree and they said okay um we we have to you know stop this quota system um you know, all on a sudden we will see that uh, this quota system reinstated and um the student started their demonstration from the uh day 1 of the july and if you look back in the first three uh, uh more than three weeks uh, nearly three weeks i mean uh, more than two weeks i would say uh the whole protest was non violent there was nothing uh, we were we have seen that they you know uh, they block somewhere for 2 hours 3 hours and they are chanting slogans look uh, we demand this we demand that so all on a sudden there was a commotion when these uh students protester was framed as a rajakars you know rajakars is a very sensitive word for bangladeshi youths they don't yeah. want to be rajakars you know uh, this that means you know the literally the rajakar means is uh, you know 
uh, aids uh, or I mean the helper but uh, in here the Bangladeshi youths believe the word is traitor so when I ask a, a man is a traitor it it's 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 horrible so um, when this uh, the head of the uh, government or the influential people of the government say hey you are a traitor or uh, not directly, indirectly mentioned, then, then it was so pathetic for the students. And then the students said, okay, uh, I, we are uh, the uh, teacher. And uh, who is saying that? That is the, uh, a dictator is saying uh, the teacher and say, calling us a teacher. So that was the initial said. And uh, the uh, there was a, uh, there is a spe uh, specific information that the uh, ruling party leaders, uh, announced that their student wing uh, will control the situation. And, you know, uh, all this happened uh, immediate after Prime Minister um, uh, unsuccessful tour in China. So uh, immediately after this uh, tour, uh, after the visit, she came here and she wanted to control the situation. Um, she, probably she could be disturbed by that. Um, we saw literally the students, especially the female students, were badly written. You know, the students maybe you you don't respect uh, uh, many people, but when a female students are hard or they are attacked, for a student uh, or those who have minimum sense, uh, they can tolerate this. And it's it's terrible. You know, the students were badly written. And the and it was by the ruling party thugs and ruling party supporters and and it is not uh it, it is very open everyone uh, uh everyone knows who are they and uh, and at the same time the, you know one of the student uh, uh, coordinator of uh, uh, northern uh an university in the northern region uh, in Rongpur, uh, Abu Said was uh, shot at uh, the very close distance, and he was unarmed. The police shot at him, and he he died uh, after a while. And that that trigger hues, and the people were so much of uh, emotional and very sympathetic of this situation, and they say it can't happen. So the student react very uh, badly, but even that their protest that their protest was very. Uh, very, uh, I would say, very peaceful in a manner, unless they are being attacked. And that protest spread across the country uh, uh, by 17 and 18 uh, July. And, um, you know, the students uh, from everywhere, they uh, uh, protest against uh, attacks and then their original demands. And uh, ultimately, what we see that uh, the students uh, uh, were eventually attacked by the ruling party thugs and the police. And uh, when, you know, the students were very united in this position because they found this very legitimate, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, demands. And um, not only the university students, uh, many places you will find the uh, very posh school, student from the very posh schools uh, also uh, join the movement and uh i was told by one of the police officer he said look i couldn't uh, uh i could fail to uh, protect my son uh, I, I, he was desperate to go uh, and to join uh, the protest and i had to lock my son uh, at, at home yeah. so that was the situation no right. the, because they thought the students were attacked uh, because of their uh, legitimate uh, demand. So they reacted badly. And you know, the Bangladesh has, uh, you know, kind of frustration nowadays because of the uh, democratic backsliding, of course, uh, um, the shrinking from our expression and so many things. So all these things, I would say, uh, came together among the students and the student reacted um, as can. Right.
and uh, is it also widely perceived that this uh, the quota for the descendants of the freedom fighters would largely benefit the children of pro government groups that uh, do support prime minister sheikh hasina's party traditionally uh i would not say i would not okay. uh, i'll not agree with this uh, okay. i'll not agree with this because you if you uh, uh, I'll, say, I'll explain you it's it's very very t- because i'm investigating one of the cases of similarly right. look i i have the quota i have the quota uh, i am not supporting this because of my family uh, we have the freedom fighter certificate my uh, grandfather and right. i i will enjoy my father was uh, pro government people but look i'm not supporting this i'm not supporting this uh, quota system yeah. um because i i believe whether it is legitimate or not and um, look this is another option what we see the government has a uh, government is yet to finalize the proper list of freedom fighters that's oh. the basic thing okay. so there are allegation in many cases the fake freedom fighters or fake freedom fighter certificate are used hmm. to recruit some pro government people okay. so that's a big issue right and do you believe this to be uh, the biggest challenge for sheikh hasina's rule of the last 3 decades look uh, it's 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 uh, it's very difficult to explain uh, what extent the uh, protest will go but i can what i can say i say uh, people um, now more daring than they were 5 uh, years ago okay um they feel uh, look if in it's it's because of the middle class the middle class people are really suffer of the whole economic situation what there you know those who are you know uh, those who have connection with the ruling party uh, or those who are in the government uh, they have uh, they have huge money most of them are using uh, uh, lux- they have the luxury life um on the other hand the middle class like us we are having uh, very struggling lives so most of the middle class people who are studying in the public university those who are go- looking for the government job they suffer so they reacted truly they they, they feel look we have to uh, if we don't their ambition is to stay uh, in the country to build a country they are more uh, they have the notion of the patriotism so they try to stay here but they are frustrated mm. because of the inflation right. they, because of the uh, unemployment rate and most of the data what government has shared about that uh, unemployment or the export import data those are now found more more and more, more faulty okay so the people uh and especially the middle class are very much uh, and lower middle class are very much frustrated because of this situation so if you go join everything the student who uh survive by you know giving tuition uh to the students mm. uh, or their uh, family to maintain family um uh, he or she needs to uh, do moon- moonlighting mm. for for these families uh, you just imagine about their yeah. suffering so they are uh, not in the good position right. so they definitely will they definitely will react and i don't know how because now all the situation uh, i will not say like uh, sri lanka but uh, after the uh, 200 killings uh, that is widespread even i i spoke to a policeman today that he said look uh, we are really ashamed of thing uh, of the situation because um uh, we are not responsible for everything um it's very difficult and uh, i don't think the police is morally high uh, morally high at this point and uh, and how long the army will stay Uh, and uh, what would be the situation coming there right and clearly there is job anxiety like you mentioned for uh, the you know the situation to reach this level that the protest initially started with the situation on government the quota for government jobs right so uh, is there really that much anxiety over jobs and uh, unemployment in bangladesh is that a major issue <laughs> of course people are you know look people are really struggling for their job yeah. you know 
not only the pay scale they are getting other than the government official or government service or uh, people work uh, you know uh, are employed with the un or international organization yeah or the garments industry most of, you see the if you a few months ago if you look the data the number of uh, youtuber uh, is now skyrocketing rocket, is why most of them trying to get alternative option to get a bit you know uh, money that I, I spoke to a, a, a top uh, ruling party leaders in northern area and he was saying look every day more than 100 uh, family member ca- came to me and uh, they beg for a job how can i give them job uh, at least uh, 90% of them look for a job I can provide them jobs, so I I try to introduce some freelancing offshore. I try to give them some training, but how long I can manage? Yeah. Unless there is you know big investment, unless there is you know uh, big factories and yeah. other thing, so I can't manage everything. I can right. every people's happy, and if if you if you look to the statistics, of how many people are leaving country for the abroad for a job? You see, the you just see the statistics of how many youths especially the at the age of uh, 18 to uh, 25 they are dying on the mediterranean sea uh, when they are crossing uh, the, uh, the mediterranean towards the italy It, this all the uh, scenario and you know the government has safety net as uh, india uh, modi government has introduced a uh, loss of certainness for the other caste or overseas but here bangladesh government also introduced lots of safety nets for the you know marginalized people uh, and and the poor section of the community but middle class what do what do they have yeah we don't have anything we have to earn our bread every day we have to think about this and uh, nowadays we have to spend huge money almost uh, 20% of our uh, no expense expenditure we had to spend for our medication because of the uh, food quality uh, and 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 uh, and uh, the environment pollution and uh, other things so middle class are really really suffering uh, in, in in the suffering so um, this all the thing it's it's in of course it is interrelated of right. course it's interrelated and you see who are the students these are the students because those who are the affluent people those who have money they try to send their kids uh, to the you know boarding school yeah. abroad or the luxury school in the country they will not join this protest because they don't care about this government job they have money they will set up their business uh, either in bangladesh or uh, europe or uh, usa so they don't care about uh, our situation because that's the terrible situation for the middle class the lower middle class and we have no class to go father can you also tell us about the uh, two journalists who were killed in the clashes yeah of course uh, one of the journalists who were killed in the jatrabari area uh, we have seen the photo because uh, i was not at, uh, at that at, at that uh, um, place at that yeah. night because um, uh, he was covering for a, a small uh, news outlet and uh, he was shot on, on his chest uh, and um, it's so pathetic because um, he had a kid for at least 5 or 7 months and um, yeah he he was basically brought to med- Dhaka Medical College at night and uh, later we identified uh, through their colleagues and i don't know whether the family would but how they will survive um, yeah. in 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 coming days and other journalist uh, who was killed in the silet uh, was uh, silet region and he was also covering the protest uh, and uh, i don't know uh, whether because you know uh, uh, most of the newspaper or the media house hardly care w- when their uh, colleagues or journalists are being uh, injured Uh, though i am fortunate right now because uh, my all expenses will be covered by the, my uh, editor immediately after um, 
Right. The incident, my editor called me. He sent uh, his uh, man and said, "Okay, don't worry. Uh, we'll spend just spend as much you can. Uh, so don't worry about this. We'll cover it up." Uh, but I don't think it happened with the every news uh, portal or news organization. Uh, for Prothamalo Daily Star, they can afford this. Uh, I don't know what about uh, many other newspaper or television channels. Uh, or especially when they get a uh, no, uh, uh, serious injuries. So you had mentioned that uh, some organizations covered the protests in a very different way, in a very non-critical way, while others managed to be more critical. Where, what is the split exactly? Is it more like uh, television channels and newspapers versus online media? Or is there an, another sort of differentiator for this? Um, look, uh what I understand your question, if I'm right, uh, television channel, uh, are, I, I spoke to many television journalists uh, last few days. Uh, honestly speaking, they are, many of them are very much frustrated. They say, look, what we see, what I know, I can't, I can't produce the copy. I, I can't produce the uh, news as okay. I see. Um, Newspaper is trying to do more because I was uh, following more than 40 newspaper, both English and Bangla. And they try to cover as much as possible. But uh, I don't think the television is covering because television is, uh, nowadays television has wide range of uh, uh, coverage and it has also, you know, uh, you know, localized uh, uh, audience. So, uh, for uh, many TV, television channels, reporters said, "Look, uh, what I saw, I can sleep for three or four nights. Uh, I wanted to report, but you know my channel, right? And my channel are so so. They are they are struggling with their notion. They are struggling with their concerns. So." It's uh, it's not you. You can say it's self censorship. You can't yeah. say. It. Please don't say this self censorship. This reporter is desperate uh, to report something, but he can't do. I don't know who is uh, who is doing what for this, but yeah. It's happening. It's happening. It sounds very similar to the situation in India as well, uh, if, yeah. if you're aware. And uh, also the state broadcaster BTV was set on fire uh, last week as well. Could you tell us what exactly happened? So what we have learned from uh, the government version as the, because during a protest, uh, you know, there is a number of university um around the BTV station and uh, BTV is uh, always like a DD Bangla or what you have in India, the government spokesman, Not it is not like uh, the TRT world or Al Jazeera right. or German uh, television like Deutsche Well, that's a public funded or it's not like the right. British Broadcasting Corporation like BBC. It's absolutely a propaganda machine of the ruling party. Uh, whoever is in the power. If it is in the BNP, then the BNP. And now it is uh, more uh, inclined to the ruling party because the government is, has been in power like uh, three terms. And so yeah. it become absolutely a uh, uh, propaganda machinery for the ruling party. So uh, I don't want to say that whether this uh, setting fire is legit, legit or not, hmm. but um, we have seen one of the uh, top uh, anti Indian protester was arrested uh, in connection with this uh, uh, the protest uh, in Palestine was setting fire of the BTV. Uh, but uh, I, I'm not sure I have seen any footage that he personally went into this uh, uh, you know, BTV station and he uh, set fire on the uh, in, a, in a reception or any equipment. So I can't say I can come like this as an investigation right. on. But what I say, uh, attack of on any media in any form uh, is uh, should no should be uh, denounced. Should be denounced. You had mentioned earlier that there has been an increasing clampdown on press freedom over the last few years, and in light of that and the uh, the violent turn that these protests have taken, I just want to ask you whether it is possible to be a neutral journalist right now while while reporting in Bangladesh. I think Bangladeshi journalists are by born neutral in the most of the cases. 
uh, they try to do their best possible journalism and uh, they try to do it. but uh, if you look back uh, to the ownership pattern a way i we have research on ownership pattern you will find uh, on the online uh, to the very uh, accessible um, we saw that the most of the uh, ruling party businessman or people connected with the ruling party uh, they are very much connected with the power power plants or uh, mega project or um, bank uh, or the uh, or big business they are the founder of most of the television channels and uh, newspapers so it is very difficult yeah. for the reporter on the ground to be you know neutral uh, in a sense because when he uh, or she comes up with a news uh, the news manager will follow the chart <laughs> they will say look we can do this and we, they will do that so uh, i spoke to many journalists uh, they said, if I am not asked to do this, I will not go for that uh, because I know this. They will not publish this report. So why right. should I take risk? Right. So there is there is a concern of the censorship, and most of the media houses are not paying uh, enough money uh, to the even the living wage. So uh, when you are not paying living wage to the journalists, so how they will survive? They had to incline to because they saw. If you are connected to the ruling party, if you are connected to the government, and if you serve purpose of the ruling party or the government, you will be benefited. So, for many journalists, it's very difficult yeah. to be uh, very independent. So, but I would say, it, having said that, I would say uh, there are hundreds of youth, uh, youth mind, young journalists, they are trying to they are trying to be the best independent journalist and uh, they are looking for the place that a sustainable place where they can get minimum living wage so that they can do their best possible journalism so i would not say by default they are by default they are uh, you know biased towards uh, any power or a position or so i would say they have limited scope limited choice to be independent so if you look uh, at the prothomalo or somewhat daily star or somewhat new age they are trying to do um, better or impartial journalism than of uh, many other newspaper uh, those who are either inclined to any political party or uh, any business group and the ruling party leaders or ruling party uh, or the government official, they nowadays don't care uh, who the journalists are, yeah. who the journalist, which kind of report he will produce. They just say, "Oh well, uh, which newspaper? Who owns this newspaper? Oh, this man. I will talk to him." I, I found many uh, senior officials. They said, "Oh, this uh, newspaper owned by uh, X or Y. Don't worry, I will call him. You don't need to do the report." So all um, um, many of the editor. Uh, can't uh, you know? Can't uh, face pressure. They had to go by because you know the uh, journalists are getting money here less than uh, a human hauler driver. So a large number of journalists are paying so low than of um, I would say a uh, uh, garments worker after uh, having a masters uh, in a public university. They are getting less money than of uh, ways than of a garments worker, so they have to think about their uh, livelihood uh, at the end of the day. So it's it's very complicated and it's very difficult Definitely. situation. I've taken a lot of your time, Muktadar, but just one of my last questions to you is about the death toll, which is around one hundred and fifty right now. I want to ask you first: Is this largely students, and secondly, is this a conservative estimate? as to how many people have been killed in the clashes uh, uh to me it's not uh, 150 it's uh, more than 200 uh it's uh, and i uh, i spoke to the police chief i spoke to uh, other officials they don't say even i, I spoke to uh, national human rights chairman he doesn't have any specific information about the numbers of deaths 
we don't know. We, we have the media report. We have uh, uh, Prothamalo Tali on the death toll. And, um, and uh, it's mixed. Uh, a large number of uh, uh, dead when those were killed are one of them i found uh, he was shot at uh, with a live bullet and said like i was uh, going to uh ask uh, where i want to uh, I, I was attending in the funeral and uh, i was shot uh, when i was uh, escaping uh, seeing the protest and i don't know who who shot me because it was not from the police side yeah. not from the uh, it's neither from the police side nor from the uh, protester side so it was very complicated so um, i don't know the who, 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 who exact uh, exact number but uh, one of the data that one newspaper reported recently that uh, uh, 80% of those uh, who killed in Dhaka uh, are at the age of uh, like 18 to 25. So most of them are youth. Okay. And Muktadir, what is the current status in the sense that are the protests on a pause and are they likely to restart? Um, as much as uh, tortured the youth uh, uh, coordinators or youth uh, activists uh, has have suffered if they uh, don't go for uh, uh, if they can finish it uh, um, peacefully they might have a problem with being prosecuted uh, and uh, face they could face uh, you know jail and uh, huge kind of sufferings because uh, you see, the, again, uh, there is a problem with the uh, political issue because uh, the society is not that much polarized, but the power is with the ruling party okay. people or the government official. So those who are protesting, most of them are from the middle class, lower middle class group, and uh, they don't have enough resource yeah. to continue their protest. So it's uh, it's very complicated and if i give, if someone gives like 500 taka yes it's for your treatment uh he that person uh, can be prosecuted for giving 500 taka and saying he hey you are fueling into state uh, protest so it's a bit complicated uh, amid the growing tension among the uh, uh, among the society yeah members. Definitely. Thank you so much Muktadar for joining us and we'll be continuing to read your reports and we hope for peace to return to Bangladesh soon. Thank you for that. 